Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and it has been a while since I've made one of these YouTube videos. I have been working nonstop in the shop here, making major updates to all four of our different kayak designs. We're finally gonna have a video talking about the East Greenland kayak design, another video giving really deep historical context for that boat, and another video showing that boat being paddled in a variety of different conditions. I just finished a major redesign for our West Greenland kayak, and not only does the new version paddle even better, it is more historically accurate and it is scalable for a wider variety of sizes. And then my final big project for the winter here is a redesign of my modern skin-on frame kayaks, which would be the F1 and the LPB. Now, both of these kayaks have fantastic performance, a little bit different flavor on each of them, but very much modern kayaks built out of skin on frame. And up until now, both of these kayaks have had a very tall peaked front deck for the simple reason that it makes it a lot easier to load gear in and out of the front of the boat, which helps to solve one of the frustrating things about many skin on frame kayaks, which is that oftentimes they can be difficult to camp out of. Now, even though I have built these with a peaked front deck in the past, I'm often getting requests from people for a flatter deck. And so far I've resisted doing that because I'm not willing to give up a major amount of functionality for something that's gonna be mostly aesthetics. But more recently, I've gotten interested in putting sails on these boats and you do get a more advantageous geometry for mounting the sail hardware with a flat front deck. And also, I want to try something that I've been doing for the last couple of years with my skin on frame canoes, which has been catamaraning them together and sailing downwind. It's something that I've always wanted to try in a kayak. It's just something that wouldn't work on my modern kayak designs because of that peaked front deck. So the desire for my customers for the look of a flat front deck, plus the sail, plus the possibility of catamaran together has finally pushed me over the edge to where I'm willing to sacrifice some of my forward cargo area for those other advantages. So I thought it would be kind of fun to fire up the camera today and bring you guys behind the scenes into my design process because this is a perfect opportunity to illustrate what I think is one of the neatest things about skin on frame and that is the ability to disassemble and back up if you want to make some changes without having to build a brand new boat. Basically what you're looking at here is the first prototype for the flat deck modern kayak. I wrapped this in saran wrap yesterday. I took it out on the water. I was pretty happy with the general performance, but there are definitely some framing changes that I wanna make here. I'm going to completely take apart this entire area and rework my strategy for these deck beams. I'm gonna be adding a little extra wood to swoop this up towards the ends, and I'm gonna be modifying the stem shapes, the rocker, and I'm gonna be changing the hull geometry a little bit. So it's kind of a big project. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get this all done today, but I think if nothing else, this should be entertaining, and you might even learn something about skin on frame building in the process. So let's get a little bit closer here and start making some changes. So something that I often do when I'm prototyping is I just screw things together really quick lets me test out different ideas without making any permanent choices. So getting rid of these deck stringers here, one of the big changes we're gonna be making today is I'm gonna be replacing this deck beam which is cut out of a solid piece of wood with one that is laminated, which is how I normally build these boats. Now, the reason I decided to try a single solid piece of wood for this is just because I thought it would be easier to make this flat shape across the top. But having not built these in a while, I forgot how much more complicated the layout is for these. And something that's really important to me with all of my skin on frame designs is just to keep the building process as simple as possible. Now, another advantage of going with a laminated deck beam is that it's a lot stronger and especially the connection to the gunnel where the tenon goes into the mortise is significantly stronger. So we're gonna be getting rid of this we're gonna replace it with this, and then we're gonna do our best to see if we can find an easy way to modify this curve to make it flat like you're seeing right here. So moving forward here to the next deck beam ahead of that one, this is a little bit of a Frankenstein situation right now because originally I had this set up as a completely flat deck beam, but then I decided I wanted to try to get just a tiny bit more cargo space because remember, this is already much lower than the existing area I would have to load gear in and out here. So what I did was I glued some extra wood on top of this, I carved out the underside of this with an angle grinder, and that got me an extra half inch, which isn't a lot, but it is significant. But 
But once again, this gets us back into that kind of complicated layout situation that I'm trying to avoid with the previous deck beam that I'm going to be replacing. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to make a laminating jig and we're going to try to laminate a very shallow arched deck beam and that's going to be stronger. It's probably going to give me an extra quarter inch above what I've got here already and it's going to make the system a lot more congruent. So I'm going to start out here just by laminating up these deck beams really quickly. That way we don't back ourselves into a corner waiting for the glue to dry. I've cut myself up some thin plies of red cedar. I'm going to mix a little bit of eastern ash into that just to make these deck beams a little bit stronger than I normally do. And I've made some modifications to my bending jig already so I can experiment with some different heights for these deck beams. Notice how I didn't glue the top piece here because that's going to be facing upwards. And spread it out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stack these together just like this. I've never actually done this, mixed a harder wood with a softer wood inside a laminating jig, inside a lamination like this. But in theory, it's going to make it a lot stronger. Although I imagine it's going to be a little more difficult to bend. So go ahead and curve this into place. All right here. Pretty easy on this one because this is a very shallow arch. The entire deck beam is only rising about a half of an inch because given what I already know from the existing deck beam, I know that's going to work just fine. So this is our lowest arch and then we're going to experiment with making progressively higher arches until we get to one that isn't going to work. And in that case, that's as much cargo space as we can get. So I'm stacking spring clamps on top of this. I love laminating with spring clamps because it's the only clamp that you can get for a dollar a piece, which means that you can do a lot of laminating for very little money. This three peg mold here is something I came up with years ago. It's just a really simple, inexpensive way to laminate deck beams like this. Much easier than ways I've seen other people doing it. And we are going to let this dry for a couple hours and then find something else to work on on the boat in the meantime. All right, so while we're waiting for that glue to dry, the next thing I'm going to do is build up the gunnels a little bit more in the bow and the stern so I can carve this into a little bit deeper swoop. Now, I've already done this by gluing blocks onto the top of the gunnels, but after I saw it out on the water, I decided that I wanted even more curve in this area. Just go ahead and put some glue on here. And how we're going to do this is we're just going to set this block right on top of the gunnel, just like that. And we're going to use those same spring clamps to line the block up with the piece of wood underneath it. That way it's not going to slide from side to side while I'm trying to clamp. So line this up here. And then I'm going to take a couple engagement clamps just like this and clamp this down nice and tight. And if you wanted to, you could definitely just cover this with clamps and then leave it for a few hours. But I don't like to have a bunch of clamps all over my boat because it makes it difficult for me to move on to the next thing. And also it means that you have to own a lot more clamps. So the easier way to do this is to employ the boat builder's friend, otherwise known as sheetrock screws. So I'm going to come in here with this clamped down and I'm just going to pilot the gunnel. I'm going to put in some of these, I don't know, I think these are like inch and three quarter sheetrock screws. And then squeezing and screwing at the same time, I'm going to go ahead, screw this in. And now I can get rid of these clamps. And this is held nice and firmly. And the only important thing about working this way is you have to remember to pull your screws out before you come back with your block plane or your saw to shape these. All right, so while we're waiting for this glue to dry, this is a good time to focus on replacing these stems. Now, 
The reason I got to replace this is one, because it is now no longer tall enough to reach up to the line of the top of the bow. But two, I kind of went a little bit nuts while I was making this and I drilled all these holes in it just to try to make it a little bit lighter. And the reason I did that is because now that I'm building this out of a two by eight as opposed to a two by six, the stem has gained four ounces. And I am super obsessive about keeping everything as light as possible on my boats. So I had a problem looking at that four ounces and then I got crazy with the drill press and then this was the result. But the reason that I'm not gonna stick with this is because once again, this is kind of a weird, complicated thing to do that I'm not going to wish upon my students. Also, I can see water getting in here and soaking this and really starting to deteriorate this even after it's saturated in oil. So as interesting as this idea is, I'm probably just gonna have to go ahead and cut this off and then we are going to rebuild this without these weird holes. Just gonna go ahead and carefully trace this onto a new piece of wood. And I'm gonna add an extra inch and a quarter up top just to make sure that I have enough. So just take a second and cut this out on the bandsaw and then I can clamp these together and theoretically I should just be able to drill straight down the middle of my holes into the new stem and everything's going to line up perfectly. And I'm just going to check the fit on this really quick. All right, that looks like it fits pretty good. All right, so now let's take a quick look at the stern stem here, which I'm also planning on replacing. What I did was I made this a little bit steeper of an angle than I normally do, and I gave it a little bit less rocker in the stern. And the idea behind that is it's gonna help to pull the kayak a little bit more downwind while I'm sailing. But I realized while I was test paddling it yesterday that if I do it that way, I might end up in this situation where I still don't have enough drag in the stern, but I've compromised the maneuverability in a way that I can't back up from. So I think what I'm gonna do is just rebuild this according to my normal F1 stem pattern. I'm gonna get rid of these holes here, but I'm gonna leave provisions so I can build up extra material at the back here to get the stem shape that I'm actually looking for before I commit to any final design decisions for this kayak. Now, one more thing I'm thinking about here is the possibility that I may have to add a rudder. And so you can see I've got this Seal Line Smart Track rudder, which I'm really hoping I don't have to add because this adds another $250, four pounds, and an extra five or six hours to the build time. So I'm really not a big fan of rudders, but it could be that this is the only way I can get the sailing performance I'm looking for, which means I need to be thinking very carefully about how I'm building and reinforcing this area so it can handle the forces of this rudder attachment. So I'm just gonna take a minute, I'm gonna rebuild both these stems, and then we'll come back and take a look at the result. Actually, I just realized that I can't do my final shaping on those stems until I cut these bow blocks down to an angle. So fortunately, this glue is almost dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out these screws here. and then cut the glue off with a chisel. Go ahead and set up a straight edge and mark this angle. Nice and dark. And then I think the easiest way to shape these, I'm just gonna take this outside for a minute and trim this down with a power planer. Actually, as long as I'm gonna be heading outside and firing up the power tools, I think I'm gonna take a sec to get rid of these two deck beams so I can fire up my plunge router at the same time and re-mortise this gunnel to a different angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a quick measurement here so I remember how wide this needs to be. Go ahead and write that on the gunnel. And then very carefully, I'm gonna slide my Japanese saw Really doing my best here to try not to damage the gunnel. 
Now, originally I was planning to dig out this tenon before I remortise it, but I think it's actually gonna be safer just to mortise straight through the old tenon. But before I do that, I've got a little bit of a problem because you can see there was a quarter inch dowel that was pegged diagonally up through the deck beam. And to reinstall the new deck beam, I'm gonna to have to use exactly this same hole, otherwise I'm gonna make the gunnel area too weak. So what I've done is just chiseled a tiny notch into the top of this here, and I've got an old 3 16 drill bit, and we are going to very carefully try to remove that without screwing it up. So. That worked well. Now, when I reinstall the deck beam, I'm just gonna have to make sure I chase that exact same hole from the outside. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is just set up my plunge router really quick to cut that mortise. And I've got a 3 8 inch spiral upcut for my deck beam mortises and a half inch piece of plywood so I can clamp different things onto it. So, easy way to do this is just to take my deck beam mortise setup jig. I actually ship these out with all of our kayak building kits just because it makes this part of the process so much easier. I'm gonna slide this right over the bit, just like that, and then I'm gonna come in beside it with another piece of wood. I can clamp it down, and then I'm gonna sink a couple screws here and here, and then when I take this out of the way, I've got perfect distance from the top of the gunnel down to the edge of the bit here. All right, so now that we've taken this apart, let's try to put it back together again. I think I'm gonna start in the stern back here and get this stem marked out. All right, so coming to the back of the boat here, I went ahead and set this up with a blanket behind it just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And I blocked the kayak up so it's sitting approximately how it would be sitting on the water. And then I've got a couple lines that I need to make here. I need to continue the line out from the top of the gunnels here, and I'm gonna tip that up even a little bit further, just to make sure that I don't screw it up. And then also, I added the rocker back into the keel here, so it's set up just like a normal F1. So I'm gonna come down here, and scribe the new line for the keel. I gotta make sure that I mark for my lashing holes. So I'm gonna put a hole here, a hole here, a hole here, 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 and here. And these two are already drilled. And the last thing I need to do is figure out how I'm gonna mount my rudder here. And that's why I set this up so the kayak is sitting like it would be sitting level on the water. So I know that I need three and a half inches of attachment point right here, but I'm gonna give myself three and three quarter just to be safe. Go ahead and take my cabinet maker square and set this up three and three quarter. Make sure it's level and then I can scribe this. So I'm just gonna take this out to the bandsaw real quick, cut all these lines, drill these holes, and then we're gonna come back and tie it in place. All right, so I got the stems finished here, but before we can put these in the boat, there's a couple things I need to do. First one is we're just gonna check the weight on each of these. That's 11.7 ounces on my bow stem, and 6.7 ounces on my stern stem. I'm gonna go ahead and write both of those down. Now, I know it probably seems silly to be keeping track of the weight with this level of precision, but honestly, anytime you're building any kind of small boat, as soon as you start making modifications, the weight can start creeping up pretty quickly. So by keeping track of this ounce by ounce, if the boat ends up a little bit heavier than I wanted it to be, I can go back, I can see where the weight came from, and I can decide if I wanna make any changes. So final thing I gotta do here is just document what I actually did. That way I can reproduce it if I need to. And if this ends up being the final version, I can give this to Liz and she can turn this into a page for the plan set. And then coming back over to the stems here, this is what this looks like when it's all put back together. I've got this lashed on here and here. Got a couple pegs down here. I've got the stringers tied in. I glued on some fairing blocks here just so I could smooth the shape of the gunnel all the way out to the tip of the boat here. 
And I know I said I wasn't gonna drill any more holes in this, but in this case, I drilled one big hole right here because even though I personally don't like pulley lines in skin boats for pulling float bags in and out, some people like to use those. And so by drilling a hole this big, if somebody wants to retrofit those lines, it's gonna be tricky, but they can feed a line through here and then pull it back. And then coming to the back of the boat here, this is how that looks in the stern. It's pretty much the same type of attachment, just a little bit different stem shape. And the only thing I really wanna point out back here is just that I had to be careful when I was setting this up to make sure that these fastener holes for this rudder didn't line up with that lashing hole right there because not only could that potentially weaken the stem, but if I have to use extra long fasteners, I could end up cutting through this lashing. So something that's not really a big deal, but something that could become a big deal if I didn't think about it during the planning stages. And then one more thing I did in the stern was add an extra rib just to strengthen this area back here for the potential of adding that rudder. Normally this would be my last rib, but in this case we got one more. So moving on to the deck beams we laminated up earlier, I went ahead and pulled these off the forms and cleaned them up. We've got the really tall deck beam for the front of the cockpit. It's got a couple extra hardwood laminations in it. And then I gave myself two choices for really shallow curves for the deck beam in front of that. All right, so I've clamped this in place on top of the gunnels here. I'm just gonna do a real quick bit of layout here. I've already done the opposite side. Then I can take this over to the workbench. And we're gonna cut some tenons on the end of this deck beam right here. Come in here with my chisel. And then I can bring this back to the boat, fit it into the mortises. And this system that I've come up with here for making these compound angle mortise and tendon joints is actually one of the things that I'm most proud of with our system. Generally, this is more of an advanced woodworking task, but I've just figured out a way to break it down to make it really easy for people, even if you don't have a lot of woodworking experience. Now, before I can start setting these deck stringers here and seeing if they're actually gonna work with the geometry of the new curved deck beams, I have one more problem I have to deal with that I really wish I didn't have to right now, and that is that I found out just yesterday that the foot braces we've been using for the last 20 years have been discontinued. So I'm kind of scrambling to find alternatives right now. I have a few different alternate brands of foot braces, but I'm running into issues with how they're gonna to mount to the boat and also how to get them to sit at the right angle so the toe pad doesn't interfere with the skin or potentially the deck stringers. So of all the ones that I have here right now, I think these smart track foot braces are probably gonna be my best bet. I had to build them up on a little bit of an angled block of wood to tilt the toe pad down. And the issue that I'm seeing immediately is that pushes these foot braces towards the center line of the kayak, which really starts to reduce your foot clearance for larger size paddlers. So I can see right now that if I put this deck stringer where I want it to be, I'm not gonna have a problem for anyone with say a 24 all the way up to about a 33 inch inseam. But you start getting into people that have 34 to 36 inch legs and size 14 feet, and immediately there's gonna be some pretty serious toe issues in this area. So I'm gonna turn off the camera for a couple minutes. I'm gonna really do some soul searching about how I wanna put this all together and then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna attach the deck stringers. All right guys, so it is actually one day later now and I have not been able to solve this foot brace problem. I managed to get these smart track foot braces set in here on a wedge that angled them down a little bit more. They didn't feel as good to me as the ones I normally use on my feet, but it seemed like it was gonna be a workable solution until I tried to slide the gear bags in and out of the bow and I realized that the position of these combined with the profile of them pushed that area two inches narrower than my normal foot braces here. And obviously that's a problem because I'm not going to design a skin boat that you're not going to be able to get your float bags or your gear bags in and out of the bow here. And so this is a problem I'm gonna to have to set aside for a while. I've still got the stock of my normal foot braces here for a few more months. I'm going to reach out to different manufacturers, see if there's something we can find off the shelf that's gonna work. 
or worst case scenario, talk about having something custom built. So kind of a giant problem, but something I'm gonna skip for right now so we can keep working with this build. I've got the deck set up here. While I was trying the different foot braces, I was checking out my foot clearance and how these stringers were mating with this curved deck beam up here and this curved deck beam back here. I think I've got a pretty good plan of how I'm gonna attach these at this point. So let's go ahead and dive into that. All right, so starting out the deck beam at the front of the cockpit here, I think the way that I'm gonna attach this deck stringer is just to build it up with a little wedge like this and then glue and screw this in place. But immediately this is creating a little bit of a problem for me because the way I normally tie down my sails is I have a micro clam cleat right in front of the cockpit here that serves as a control line for my sheet on one side and my uphaul line on the opposite side of the kayak. And then I run a bungee underneath this and around a little hook right here. And it's a really convenient setup because it ties the entire sail down nice and tight in exactly the right position. And it's super positive, especially if you end up in some type of a rough water situation where you're doing rescues or you're landing through the surf and you really don't want your sail to come untied and start flapping around. And the problem I'm seeing here is that if I just go with this kind of setup, I'm not gonna have anywhere to attach this because the skin is gonna be free floating from here to here. So I'm gonna have to give this a little bit more thought before I figure out what I'm gonna do here. So why don't we move forward to the next deck beam right here. And this is gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Now, the way that this is sitting on here right now, honestly, what I would like to do is just put a little bit of a wedge right underneath this and then peg this down. But the problem with that is, if I want this to have the catamaran functionality that I need, I need both of these to be perfectly flat and basically parallel to the plane of the earth. And if I put these like this, they're gonna be slightly angled and then those catamaran boards are gonna sit on here kind of weird. So what I'm gonna to have to do is just take these off and we're gonna have to plane this or maybe chisel this a little bit so these are sitting in here nice and flat. Should be pretty easy and only take me a couple minutes. All right, so I originally tried to just flatten this whole thing with my block plane, but I realized that was gonna make the deck beam too thin. But because I added these extra hardwood laminations in here, I do have room to carve into this top piece of cedar. So I came in with my Japanese saw and then I chiseled this out a little bit. And now these are gonna sit on here nice and flat like they're supposed to. I should probably mention that I actually replaced this. It turned out that that slightly higher arch just wasn't gonna give me the line on the deck that I needed. So unfortunately, I had to surrender and I'm not gonna get that extra quarter inch of cargo space. All right, so coming back to this taller curved deck beam at the front of the cockpit here, you can see that I did decide to just glue some wedges onto the top of the deck beam because it seemed like the most efficient way to make this deck beam to stringer joint. Now, of course, that doesn't solve that problem I was talking about earlier with not having a convenient mounting surface for this micro clam cleat here, which is either gonna be the uphaul line or the sheet for the sails. But I feel like at this point, I'm just gonna have to put this together and build it. And then if I need to tear it back apart and make a modification, I can do that. Or maybe I can just scab some more wood on or come up with a different solution. So let's take a few minutes, wait for this glue to dry and go to other parts of the frame. So coming back to the stern of the kayak here, I've fitted a little block that's got a one inch diameter hole in it. And this is just gonna be for a drain plug I'm gonna be installing in this particular kayak. This is something that I sometimes do, sometimes don't do, just depending on what kind of kayak I'm building. And all the instructions for this are in my regular kayak building course. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this in place with a couple pegs here. I've already got a couple of them in. A little bit of glue onto a peg, pound it in. And I'll probably set a couple more of those. All right, so coming back up to the bow of the boat here, one of the things I really had to think about when I was redesigning this was how I was gonna reinforce this area so it can handle the forces of the sailing rig and also just to make sure I have appropriate mounting for the hardware that needs to be up here. So first thing I did was I made this deck beam a little bit wider and thicker and out of a stronger piece of wood so it can handle the downward thrust of the sail and also just so I can attach it. And then I moved it a little bit further forward because that's gonna allow the entire sail rig to sit 
a little nicer on deck than it does on the standard version of the F1. It's gonna overlap the cockpit a little bit less, which is a little bit more comfortable from the paddling perspective. And also, hopefully, this slightly farther forward position is gonna help with some of those performance issues we talked about earlier. So that's the first thing I did up here. Next, I needed to think about how I'm gonna stiffen this area to be able to handle the force of the stays coming up to the mast. And I already know that this is strong enough to be able to mount a sail because I have retrofitted sails onto my standard F1, but as long as I'm designing a sailing kayak from scratch here, I'm definitely gonna add a little bit more reinforcement. And my first idea was just to add an extra deck beam in this area, and that would certainly get the job done. But when I mocked it up, I didn't like how it looked. And also I realized that there was a better solution for stiffening this that wasn't going to add any more weight and it was going to give me much better mounting options. And that is to take this piece of wood right here and just glue it to the inside of the gunnels. And Two of these, one on either side of the boat here, weighs less than this deck beam would have weighed. It stiffens the area more, and it just gives me great mounting surfaces so I can attach any uh, pad eyes or anything else in this area. So my plan here is just to go ahead and glue this to the inside of the gunnel and let it sit overnight. But before I do that, we're gonna go to the workbench and check something very important. Okay guys, so what I've done here is I've just made a little mock-up of the gunnel. This is all out of a solid piece of wood, but what I'm simulating here is the gunnel thickness plus the piece of wood that I'm gonna be adding to the inside of it. And then I've beveled the top of this to where it's gonna be sitting basically flat. And so what I'm looking to check here is to make sure that any pad eyes or any other attachment that I'm mounting to the top of this is going to accept the fastener that I need at the depth that it needs to hold. And as far as how I figured out what fasteners and what pad eyes and stuff to go with here, that's just from my experience working with the catamaran boards on the canoe building system. But I'm imagining that all the same things apply here. So in this case, this is gonna go down to about here and it looks like I'm still safe. What you don't wanna do is have this mounted out further you go to screw it down and then it blows out of the inside of the gunnel where you can't see it underneath the line of the skin here. So always good to check these things because if you build a boat, you can't get back in there and reinforce them. So now that we've got that figured out, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue on this. Try not to put too much on because it's kind of a pain to clean up. In case you're wondering why I use Gorilla Glue as opposed to any other glue, it's really just because it dries quickly so I can keep moving through my process. So, go ahead and spread this on here. Go ahead and just put this on the inside of the gunnel. Putting it down just a little bit because I still have to flatten the top of the gunnel for the rest of that half inch wide surface there. And then put some clamps on. And I don't have any sort of a crystal ball to say that this is going to be a good idea or a bad idea. I just like to experiment with things and then if it turns out to be a bad idea, I do it differently on the next one. Now, moving a little bit further back in the kayak here, you can see that I've already added a similar reinforcement directly behind the deck beam at the back of the cockpit. And in this case, this isn't a mounting surface for any sailing hardware. It's actually a stiffener and a mounting surface for the hardware that I'm hoping is going to attach the stern catamaran board in this area. Now, something else I'm doing in this area that's a little bit different than how I normally build this boat is I'm getting rid of the aft deck stringers that normally mount in this area. And the reason for that is I need this to be perfectly flat back here to be able to have the catamaran attachment. So obviously I can't have those protruding up even just a little bit. Now, functionally, this really isn't a big deal. It doesn't change the function of the kayak at all. And honestly, I'm really happy to save the weight from those two extra pieces to counterbalance a lot of the extra weight we're adding to the kayak elsewhere. But it does create one really silly problem that does need to be addressed. And that is the way that I normally tie my back bands in place is I run a line through the back of the back band. I feed it through this narrow gap between the skin and the top of the aft deck stringers and then around underneath here. And the way that all comes together just can be perfect back band positioning where I can still move the back band up enough that I can load gear. But when it falls down, it falls down in exactly the right spot for my lower back. And so 
I'm sure there's a variety of other ways I can make that back band attachment, but for right now, just to keep things simple for myself while I'm prototyping, what I've decided to do is just glue two little blocks of wood that are a quarter inch thick by about a half inch longer than the width of the deck beam back here in the normal aft deck stringer location. That way I can just use my same method for tying on that back band and I don't have to figure that out right now. So this will probably get changed in the future, but for right now it's solving a problem so I don't have to think about it. All right, so we're getting really close here to finishing up this reframe. I was able to successfully rebuild this joint here without damaging the gunnels or the deck beam. I glued these blocks on top and trimmed the ends and the deck stringers are fitting pretty good. I'm gonna get in here and do a little more work on this and then I can attach them. But before I do that, I have one very important thing that needs to happen and that is to set the tracks for my foot braces because what's going to happen if I set these deck beams it's going to block my ability to get my drill in here so I can get a really solid fastener set on the foot braces and that's super important because sometimes in certain extreme kayaking situations in the surf let's say you pitch pull your boat and all your body weight slams down to your foot braces you have to make sure that these are solidly attached Otherwise, they're gonna blow right out of the gunnels here. And that kind of brings me to my frustration with the fact that I'm going to have to switch to a different foot brace style because even though these Harmony slide lock foot braces here aren't particularly well made, something I've really liked about them over the years is that one, they're lightweight. Two, the foot geometry here matches really well with the inside of our boat and it's not so big that it blocks the float bags and it's really easily adjustable from the cockpit and those are all very good things and it has five different fastener locations here so when I screw this down to the gunnels I am certain that this is going to stay where I put it so it's going to be really sad for me to have to come up with a different alternative to this but I still have some left right now so I'm going to go ahead and set this in place. I've already piloted the gunnel for this, by the way. And then later on, once the kayak is complete, I can reach in here and I can slide this foot brace track on. And this is just one of those sequencing things that you're gonna see in my course that isn't really that big of a deal, but could end up costing you a lot of time and frustration if you were to back yourself into a corner, for example, by putting your deck stringers on first. So anyways, I'll put the other one of these on and then we will finally put these guys where they're supposed to be. All right, guys, moment of truth here. We're gonna go ahead and attach these deck stringers Hopefully this is the right way to do this. Undoubtedly, I will probably do this four or five different ways before I've settled on a final solution. Now, I'm putting a little bit of glue on this joint right now, which is not something I would normally do in a skin boat. It's actually better if the joints in a skin boat can flex a little bit, but in this particular application where I'm gonna be potentially adding catamaran functionality directly to the top of these deck stringers, I really want these to be as stuck as possible. So, Go ahead and put this in place. I've already piloted the holes for this, by the way, and I'm gonna get myself a quarter inch dowel. Once again, this is just what I'm doing right now. It doesn't necessarily mean it's what I'm gonna be doing in the final version. Put it in the hole. And anytime you're sinking a peg like this in a skin boat, the worst thing you can do is just grab a hammer and start hitting it because you're gonna end up damaging this tendon joint. And so, I'm gonna support this from underneath like this as I start this joint here. When it gets to the point where I really have to hammer on it, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so I'm not stressing the tenon. All right, there's that one. And then I'll come forward here and do this one. Once again, supporting it from underneath. All right, we have deck stringers. So very last big design decision I need to make before I can clean up this frame and put a skin on is to decide what I'm gonna do with my secondary stringers. 
Now, normally on the F1 or the LPB, I just add a little extra piece of wood to the outside of the bottom of the gunnel here, and that increases the volume in this area, which results in noticeably more secondary stability, but because this is attached to a very flared hull shape and it's sitting above the waterline, it really doesn't decrease the quickness or the speed of the boat on the water. Now, if I want even more secondary stability, what I can do is add another eighth of an inch to that profile, which isn't a huge difference, but it is noticeable. And once again, it doesn't decrease the speed or the quickness of the boat. Now, if you want even more stability than that, let's say you've got a special scenario where you have a disability or you're getting older or you have balance issues, or maybe you're a hunter or you're a photographer, or like me, you're designing a dedicated sailing kayak where a lot more stability would be useful. In that case, we need to start making some compromises. So something you'll see on a lot of different Inuit kayaks is multi-chine boats or boats that have a single hard chine with a small secondary stringer put in here somewhere on top of the ribs. And this will definitely give you a lot of extra stability, but you're also adding another very heavy framing member to the boat. And if you go with something with roughly this profile, you're talking about adding one to two pounds extra to the boat and you end up slowing the boat down a little bit because now you're starting to push volume out into the stream of water here and the boat basically has to plow that out of the way. And so I'm not a really big fan of putting secondary stringers in this area, but an idea I've been experimenting with lately is the idea of kind of compromising between the two and making a piece of wood that's still relatively thin but is much taller and is sitting on the outside of the ribs at the bottom of the gunnel. And from some recent experiments I did on the water, I found that this gave me an appreciable increase in secondary stability. All right, so I'm just gonna interrupt myself right here because I realized when I was editing this last portion of the video that I wandered off into a 10 minute long design discussion of the relative trade-offs between secondary stringer height, location, speed, and stability, which is interesting to me, but probably not to anyone else. And this is also starting to get to be kind of a long video, so for the five or six people that are still here watching, thanks for sticking with me. The reason I brought you into this behind the scenes here was just to show you that there's no hard part about building a skin boat. The actual woodworking tasks are relatively easy and it's a nice medium because it gives you the freedom to be creative in a way that doesn't carry the same amount of penalty as if you say spent 300 hours building a strip built that you ended up not liking. So it's a great medium for prototyping and evolving designs. And if you're someone that's really keen on experimentation and you like to engineer things and you like to spend time iterating, Skin on Frame is absolutely fantastic for that. And if you're someone who doesn't like spending the time building boat after boat after boat to finally get to one that you like, well, in that case, you could always sign up for one of my courses or buy one of my skin boat building plants, and I've already done that work for you. And if you're wondering why I was comfortable sharing that amount of detail for my design process here, it's because the reality is most of the things that you just saw are probably gonna change. Anytime I'm redesigning a boat like this, I usually have to build it three to five times to get it back to what I'm looking for. And if I'm designing a new boat from scratch, oftentimes that's about 15 to 25 boats to get something that I'm comfortable turning into a plan set. So, if you decide to use any of these modifications in your own skin boat building, just keep in mind that this is completely experimental. I'm not saying that anything you saw here today was structurally sound or even a good idea for the performance of the boat. So with that caveat, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also find me on my website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a whole bunch more skin boat building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can also find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where I post a daily build blog of everything I'm doing here in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram channel. We've got so much great photos and videos, and it's a great way to keep up on what I'm doing with my design process here. 
you're gonna see what I'm working on every single day as opposed to waiting two to three months for it to show up on the website or on the YouTube video. And definitely if you're building one of my boats, that is a great way to keep current on all the latest potential modifications that you can add to your boat. So that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.